Music plagiarism cases have been part of the music business since the very beginning. But every now and again, a case pops up that sets a precedent that has repercussions for years to come. A great example of this is the case of Bright Tunes Music versus Harris Songs Music. The allegation was that George Harrison had copied the song He's So Fine by the Chiffons. He's so fine for his song My Sweet Lord. Bright Tunes Music is the publishing company set up by the Tokens, the New York-based doo-wop group best known for their 1961 hit, The Lion Sleeps Tonight. They also produced and provided instrumentation for the Bronx-based girl group, The Chiffons. In 1963, they went into Capitol Recording Studios in New York and recorded three songs with The Chiffons, all written by songwriter Ronnie Mack. He's So Fine was one of the songs from that session. It was released as a single in February 1963 and by the end of March it had reached the number one spot on the Billboard charts and it stayed there for four weeks, selling over a million copies. In 1970, shortly after the official breakup of the Beatles, George Harrison released his third solo album, All Things Must Pass. The first single, My Sweet Lord, was released in November 1970 and by the end of the year it was number one in over 15 countries. Some journalists noticed similarities between My Sweet Lord and He's So Fine and noted the resemblance in their reviews of the album. Ben Gerson of Rolling Stone magazine called it an obvious rewrite. In February 1970, Bright Tunes Music filed suit against George Harrison's Harris Song Music Company on behalf of the family of Ronnie Mack who had died of cancer not long after He's So Fine hit number one. Later in February 1971, with My Sweet Lord still topping charts all around the world and legal proceedings commencing against Harrison, country music singer Jody Miller released a cover of He's So Fine. The version was produced by Billy Sherrill, best known for co-writing and producing Tammy Wynette's signature song Stand By Your Man. Miller's version of He's So Fine reimagined the song very much in the country style, complete with sliding steel guitar. He's a soft-spoken guy so sweet kind of It's not clear if Miller or Cheryl had purposefully added the steel guitar to make it more reminiscent of the international hit by the ex beatle or if it's simply a coincidence. Either way, the addition of the slide guitar and the fact that some of the backing vocals had been removed made this country version sound like a mashup of the two tracks. Anyone that didn't hear the similarities before could surely hear them now. In 1976, five years after the suit was first filed, the trial began and George Harrison was summoned to testify. I was requested to go and take my guitar, which was really terrible. I had to stand up in court with my guitar. So all these people grilling me and talk about how you write a song, which is really difficult because every song is slightly different anyway. The jury didn't get to hear the two songs side by side. Instead, they heard from musicologists who had analysed the sheet music. What happened, they blew up the, uh, what they call Motive A, which was da-da-da. They had that blown up about six feet square in court, and they were kept talking about these three notes, and the musicologist came on and played like about 15 or 20 songs, all with the same notes. Another odd detail in this case is that during the proceedings, Harrison's manager, Alan Klein, bought out the publisher that owned He's So Fine. So by the end of the case, Harrison was being sued by his own manager. The court ruled against George Harrison and awarded $1.6 million in damages. That was around 75% of all the earnings from the song in North America. While delivering the verdict, the judge noted that he believed Harrison had not intentionally plagiarised the song, but under the law as it stood, he had to rule that there was an infringement, albeit subconscious. The decision was the first of its kind, and understandably, George Harrison was a bit disturbed by the whole thing. It made me so paranoid about exactly. writing that I thought, God, I don't want to even touch the guitar or the piano in case I'm touching somebody's note. Legal proceedings would continue for many years. The matter wasn't completely settled until 1998. In 1981, a court ruled that due to his double dealing, Alan Klein wouldn't be able to retain the rights to He's So Fine, and instead George Harrison was able to purchase them from him for $587,000. That's the same amount he'd purchased them for a few years earlier, and much less than the $1.6 million initially awarded. This was a landmark case that influenced all music copyright cases that followed. Despite the long-running legal issues, George Harrison was able to remain good-humoured about the whole thing. Shortly after the court case in 1976, 
he released the single This Song, with satirical lyrics poking fun at the court case and a video set in a courtroom. Don't 